ridiculous. This is ridiculous. Okay, now it's gonna work. Now it's working, I can see it's working. This is ridiculous, 43 minutes in. I'm so sorry about that. I almost wanted to just, I'm just, I'll clip it. I'm gonna clip this part because it's a live stream and I can't really now go it's back. Gonna work. Now it's working. <laughs> this always resets itself like sometimes. It's just ridiculous, you know? It happens here, it happens in YouTube. I uh, stopped the video and started over again because I played the beginning of this by Graham Hancock, but then I realized it probably would uh, be uh, copyrighted anyways, but I don't really want to steal his stuff, but I thought it was inspirational, so I played it at the beginning. And I, whose stuff I'm going to steal tonight is actually New Earth. And it's just very simple, New Earth. Uh, make sure that you've got the right one. She's, I don't know how to get that larger. I guess we can zoom in a little bit just to make it clear on the video what you've got if you want to see who that how big can we go that's as big as we can go so that's her logo and it's like somebody holding a camera her brown hair it's probably her her name is um we're gonna see it uh it's right here in the middle of the video i'm gonna make it smaller now actually i can't play the music so i'm gonna turn that down and uh, do it one more time and uh, let it play. And one of the things I'll do is also I'll put it at double speed. So now that it's at double speed, it might go a little faster than we want. Uh, this woman is uh, from either Eastern Europe or Russia. I always thought it was more Eastern Europe. I think she's got some introduction, and she owns the website megaliths.org. Uh, did want to check my stream. Here it is. I have one viewer, that's nice, and one playback. Okay, that's okay, I'm gonna keep going with this. It doesn't have to be a long video. Uh, this video of hers introduced this idea about how the whole Mexico coastline right there was formed. Now you do know that uh, the they, they, he, they will let, I'll let it run, and then you can see for yourself. They are comparing it to South America as well, and she's even saying there's some, a row of islands. I mean, lots of different similarities, and it also kind of looks like it was scooped by a crane. So she's really opened my eyes two years ago when I saw this video for the first time. Uh, now, like I said, I, I went back looking for it, and it had been taken down, but it looks like she's reload, reloaded it. Uh, one of the things she talks about in this video is the fact that YouTube has taken away data. Even here, you can see that the real ocean has been digitally altered for some reason with some attributes towards topography. However, in general, it's terrible. Look at the shorelines. You can see the blue from the real ocean photography around islands as well. But for some reason, they've done some type of a change that was near Cuba, and we have heard that there's some underwater civilizations in the Cuba area. Now, this video, she presented it, but she gave credit to a Japanese gentleman. So she's compiled a lot of different sources here, and she's given the credit, and she deserves the credit. She's really good. Uh, most of her recent videos are a little bit in a different direction than I would prefer. However... Um, this is Alaska. This is up in Canada. You can see the, the uh, up at the north end. She mentioned the scraping effect, and she notices these same lines. It looked like it could have been done by some massive terraforming machine regiment. And as you may know, recently I was showing the same type of thing. I'm letting it play until it gets to a certain point. I want to show you exactly what she's talking about. I might even turn on the, the, the actual sound. This is actually Alaska, if I'm not mistaken. And the funny thing about Alaska is that uh, there's this one canal she showcases very interestingly, and that is right here. It starts there. I saw this a long time ago. And the funny thing about this canal, I'm going to show you. This is, look at the colors here. And let's go to Google Earth and see the canal now. Why did Google Earth change it? Look at this. 
the, and you can see the rectangle is just around that area. Now you can see where this line runs down and goes across this river, which has a dam right there. There's the dam she mentions and shows. Then it goes across and you can see this track-like looking structure. And let's just measure just the page here. I'm not gonna zoom in or out. It's uh, one meter across. So when you see that I'm following it about three, I'm sorry, did I say meter? I meant to say kilometer. It's one kilometer across. So that's at least five kilometers at this point, six kilometers. It goes across this river. Um, you can see it start back up again right over here. It goes around. And look at this, it, it looks like snow is covering it. And now let's watch her video uh, to see hers. Look at the difference in clarity. Sorry, I'm drinking. That's the dam that I just showed you going across a river. That's probably modern day, but maybe the middle part is not. But it goes right across and then you can see it continuing up there and that's where it stops. Let me just go back a little bit and show you one more time because I, I want to get it full screen <clears throat> and I want to get this on the video uh, so I can compare it but look how clear that is you can see green you can see lakes the the track has obviously got some land in it but you've got like parallel rivers blue those little rivers are blue but when you look at it now and let's go back again to now in Google Earth how much has changed I mean you do see the tracks but you still lose a lot of resolution and there's going across the river. Wait, that's not it. That's another river over here. Following it this way. This is where that river is right there. And if you zoom in, you can kind of see the dam. Looks like it's been, it looks like it's been di digitally altered. If you look at it, it looks like it's got some kind of an oil painting effect. And then you move over and then you've got this, which is definitely not what she had at all. You can follow it. It's just like a desert. It's, is that ice? Is that snow? Maybe they were trying to cover up uh, the, the evidence of this megalithic line that goes all the way here with a snow-covered photograph, and they're trying to play it off. But look, at it seems like they just edited that one spot. Let's go back and watch your video one more time just so we can get an idea. There it's at the top. That's the beginning of this, this clip. And I did go and look this up. It took me a long time to look it up. Let's hear what she says. Now let's see various images from North America, which appear to be quite... Mm. Sorry, I, I forgot. I sped up the video double speed, so I'll just not play what she says at this time. Um, but I think it's quite important, her observations. And I do suggest you go to... You can see this through megaliths.org, but her video channel is called New Earth. And I learned a lot from her in the last two years, last three years. Um, like I said, she's kind of gone in a different direction for her most recent videos, but just yesterday, she came out with a new video talking about Italy and the megalithic structures in Italy. I have that right here. Um, I have to make sure I have it. Huge, no, that's different. Um, it's uh, who could have made that many, where is it, here? Who could have made that many ancient earthworks slash canals in Italy? And I'll, I'll play this, but not the sound. This is not sped up. So I'll let you hear her voice. Okay, her name, you can see it, the, uh, the watermark, Sylvie Ivanova. Sylvie Ivanova. And... Uh, she seems like to be the owner of megaliths.org, megaliths.org. I've um, reached out to her, but I don't think I got a response for some stuff, but that was so long ago that most of my priorities have changed. Um, I just wanted to hear her voice. It's, I hate to say it like this, but it is kind of cute, and so it's, it's very entertaining to hear her as an English teacher. Also, I noticed the grammatical mix-ups from her, not just accent, but her, uh, her second language... Um, mishaps. This is Italy. And the stuff she shows, you when you see it, you say, oh, that's natural. But then when you realize 
It's not. I don't know who's taking this video. You can't hear her yet, so I'll just keep going. I'm, I'm looking for chats as well. So where is the live stream? I always get mixed up. One viewer, three playbacks. Okay, well, I promise this video, and I'm going to show everything that I can. So this is the one of Alaska, and I can show you one more time where that's located. It's right here. Right here it starts, and uh, this is Alaska, and she was showing a lot of other spots. I mean, look how green it looks, but when you zoom in, the photographs disappear. There's a lot of earthworks in here. Lots of lakes, eh? Alaska's got so many lakes. I mean, that's that's like a thousand right there. So she, it's got literally thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of lakes there. And some people argue that they've been, I mean, those right there, that those are very similar to the, um, basically an asteroid hit I, uh, Greenland and caused a ejecta to come out and scatter, or I believe in what Randall Carlson says, that this is probably, these ellipses are probably from lava shooting across. Uh, maybe they made lakes, maybe they didn't, but it's very similar to the Carolina Bays, if you know what I mean. The Carolina Bays are also very similar. Uh, however, these are all overlapping. They're a little bit um, chaotic in layout. The Carolina Bays are spread out a little more. So this is closer to the original catastrophe point if Greenland was the place. So let's see where Greenland is. It's over here, and the circle where the crater is, that they're suspecting is one of the sources of the Younger Dryer is right there. So uh, you have to kind of compare it to Alaska. Let's take one more look. So there's Alaska and there's the crater. So that means that it splattered this direction. But what we looked at just now was kind of a kind of a different direction, wasn't it? Right there. You can see that it's kind of leading to a different direction. It's kind of looks like it's coming from over here. So I'm not going to stand by anything, really. I'm asking questions more than making statements when it comes to this. Uh, this other thing, I actually was just looking to see. So what I'm trying to say is uh, about the uh, who could have put that many ancient earthworks canals in Italy. It just came out, oh, it was out January 3rd. But um, for some reason, I... I guess I looked at her channel and I opened it up and I was thinking, gosh, I need to go back and see if she ever re-uploaded her North American one. And sure enough, right in the video itself, she has, I'm going to just show you if I can. It's in my ancient. She flashed this on her screen and said, you make sure to come to this and watch this. And this is Colossal Ancient Earthworks in America, Part 8, When the Survivors Wake Up. Uh, you can check it out herself at her channel, megaliths.org, and also New Earth Channel. Now, there's a lot of stuff that's been going on. I had one gentleman, Deronius Subdeviant, talk about the um, Terra Peta, Preta, Terra Preta, that was found in South America. Uh, I did learn about it from Graham Hancock by listening to him uh, read his book called America Before. And it says uh, that the Terra Preta was a man-made kind of a kind of a fertilizer that was kind of a living fertilizer that could, would continue to live. And uh, here's Theronius. He says he's been on that Terra Preta and he's been watching it and he says that it's basically biochar. Let me zoom into that so you can read it better. Biochar. He says it's basically biochar that is charcoal supercharged with beneficial fungi. It fixes a lot more of the nutrients and the carbon from the forest litter so it keeps the soil very fertile. Fertile. There is evidence of its widespread deliberate use by people who lived in the Amazon thousands of years ago. Some might say that the Amazon rainforest is an overgrown garden. Parts of it evidently are. Now, we were always taught through mainstream science that Africa, the nutrients from Africa were going through the, the, uh, the air and ending up 
over there. So that's where the desert went. I mean, when it desertified, all those things went across the Atlantic Ocean. That's what I learned. And I didn't have any reason to say I don't believe that. Where's the arrow? There we go. So we saw that. Um, I talked about that last time. These are just some pictures I took of the megalithic structures in Lesotho. South Africa encompasses Lesotho. And the Michael Tellinger videos that I've seen talk about ancient gold mines. Now, this one was kind of looks like a crater. I think it could still be a crater, but it's almost too perfectly symmetrical with its inner ring. There's an inner ring that follows. I don't see craters with inner rings, but I could be wrong about that. This was a triangle nearby, and I was just catching the angle. Um, not a very good shot, but it, this does lead all the way out. So starting from the red line, it's this is actually 15, so 30, uh, 45. It's like exactly half of 90, right? Is it? Wait, I take that back. One, two, three and a half. One, two and a half. Okay, so three and a half times 15. And uh, I guess that's nothing special, but the angle is so sharp. Uh, I have another picture of that. Is the, it's just a, around the corner of these, it's, a, it's a, a lines going in. And you do have an isosceles triangle happening here, even though the, the point gets covered up. Uh, that goes on for a few kilometers. I, if you watch the other video, it goes on and on. It spreads out and comes out to here. You can see. I'll show you again, but I just want to zoom in on this L. This, this is where that triangle comes to. And it's kind of weird because uh, it looks like people walked across here to be lazy. or But that's stone. They're cutting into the stone. So uh, you can see it happening here. And here, this ancient, it's a plateau now, was a, at one point in time the floodplain. And it looks like they dug in and created some kind of a massive lake or something to me. Uh, you can see some kind of a terra forming over here on the north side let me see how much i can zoom in let's go here i mean what's happened here that looks totally man-made and these are houses so you're talking about the size of uh, several houses but it's an ancient mountain cap coming out of the top so it's not like it was modern made terraforming you can see these houses here and you still have these interesting lines like if it really was made from intelligence why were they so messy or was this some type of ancient concrete that got removed and broke away you've got trees going way down there we're talking about a i think a couple hundred we, we could look at the topographic map if we wanted to that's the picture um if you notice it also has parallel lines now that on the left is a road and this but it's not perfectly north it's going north south uh, basically essentially but there's a parallel rectangle here. And the question is, how old would it, how much time would it take for that rectangle to become so w jiggly? I mean, it's not a perfect rectangle. This line at the bottom goes across and it comes over to another area that could have been part of a plateau that washed away. So we don't really know what's going on here. And uh, there's other pictures of it that I'll show you. I was just playing with some angles there that's some here's a close-up of actually the a plateau that I found in the Rashad structure so the eye of Africa is very close it's not in the Rashad structure it's nearby the Rashad structure in Mauritania and basically what I found was these parallel lines on the top of a platform this is my theory we're dealing with everything get washed away over time it took maybe 50,000 years that's a different picture, but going back to that, I uh, I posted this on my um, my Facebook page that's in the description. I don't want to misquote it. It's down there, and you can find this picture and the link to the Google area. Take a look for yourself. But what I see here is about a kilometer or two going across this plateau. You've got these parallel lines they go down and back up into some other plateaus that also washed away. Uh, this right here, I forgot what this was. It says Serra de Canha Brazil impact structure. So they say impact. Impact. I mean, this was a pretty big impact because if that's the crater in the middle, you've got major, major mountain loss all around that. 
I mean, it really did. I mean, and maybe we should even measure this, but I don't, I have to go find it. I'm, I'm going to do that another time. I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, let me go back to uh, first. I think I'm done with everything, really. I, I didn't want to go too crazy tonight. Uh, there's uh, four videos on the New Earth channel I wanted to mention. This is her Italian video. I can close that. It's pretty good. Uh, let me see the live stream here. How many? Nobody? I have nobody. What's going on? It's public. I have six playbacks now, but I only have one viewer and no comments. Oh, broke my heart. Well, that's okay. Um, so this is a video about Italy, and uh, this is, I want to even just close that. I already heard it twice. And this is the one about Alaska that she did, Colossal Ancient Earthworks in America. Now, this goes on for a good 46 minutes, so there's other stuff in here. I mean, this is North America, and this is a good one. Look, this, this one is very interesting, because this grid has been seen, of course, from Google Earth. But the more interesting thing is that grid was covered with power poles. These are a bunch of different places with this, this grid-like structures. These power poles were put in there. And I guess the implication is, is that this was going to... I mean, why would you do that? I, don't, I still don't know why you would do that, except if you were going to build houses there. But I don't think you would build them that high. You wouldn't do that. And I think if you're building houses, you would go underground so you could just have no poles. I think most, uh, so obviously they're not building houses. Is that still going? Yeah. Very interesting stuff. And I really highly recommend searching it. I guess I can click there so you can see the link. You can just go there. Uh, the Ancient Earthworks in Italy. I click here. Whoops. Click here so you can see that. And this is my, this is me. So nobody came from, I, I put a, the word out that I was going to do this. But nobody came back. These spits, they call them spits. You know, I was looking at some that were in Africa. And they're very intriguing. Sorry, somebody's making noise upstairs. It's triggering me. Check out the New Earth channel. And this ancient irrigation of South Africa, let me just show you on Google Earth where we're talking about. First find Africa. Let me just go north-south so it's the right way, and then I can find Africa very quickly. Now, when you zoom into Africa, you know you can see Lesotho, Lesotho, Lesotho uh, right there. Oh, there it is down there. And, you know, the last time we talked, I had some observations that it was uniquely connected to its border and it's also very high now you can easily say those mountains are a different country but it seems like these mountains are terraformed and uh, by the way I'll just show you right here you can find the structures that I sh showed I mean look at this one this is an interesting one you can see an ancient uh, I call this an intelligent line intelligent Lines are seen all over this place. There's an, well, that looks like a street. I'm not going to try to claim that's an intelligent pre civilization line, but look at this one going across here, across the valley. And you can even see little bits of it like miles away. Like it used to be, this plateau used to hold all these ancient walls. This one right here is pretty nice. Look at that line right there. That looks intelligent. It goes right through the mountain. And here's another one right here. Were those canals? What were they doing? Were they... I mean, look at... Okay, and another thing... And you might say, oh, that's done by humans, these mountains. But to be honest, I don't think humans could have done that much. I'm not talking about this agriculture, but I'm going to take you over into kind of the middle of the country, up here in the hills. You can go down there. And when you get in here, you see that it looks like it's been terraformed in a really weird way. All this work... I mean, like they were made, they were like created. All these lines are showing. And sometimes it gets really intelligent looking. It's not just like these. You wouldn't say that that was made by man. Okay, so those are farmers. Uh, well, it actually looks like the earth was scooped out. The, it's got a contour to it. And the first thing I think about is the scooped out um, quarries of Egypt and how they look scooped out. But this isn't the only thing. The dirt is 
like it's just like I don't know anymore. Like was this, there's one of more ancient line right there. You can see a line of intelligence going across this mountain, across this mountain, and then you've got kind of some residual uh, uh, mega breccia sticking out. Was that mega breccia just concrete? Look at this. I mean, what kind of farmers would do that? It looks like it's been scooped out. And it's so similar all over the country. And what farm, I mean, you see it and you think, oh, that's farmers, those farmers. But what are they growing? And I checked the CIA database on this country. In modern day, they're not really doing much. This is actually grazing land. They graze cows. They do a little bit of agriculture, but it's only 13% of the whole country does agriculture. It's really a very poor country. Uh, they have 2 million people. So it's actually less people than Taiwan. I could be wrong about that. I have to double check my information. Um, I'm pretty sure I thought I saw 2 million. 2 million is nothing in compared to this country, which is much bigger than Taiwan. When you zoom in, you can see just so much not there. I mean, you can see so many lines. It looks like it's been stacked up. And when you look and see something that has intelligent design in it like this, you think these this has been formed. Now that looks like it's been farmed, but what's growing and how come people are working it so hard? Look at this one. Looks like it's been scooped out. Uh, we saw that already. Yeah, this one is intel incredible. And you can go on, on and on and on about with these scooped out pastures. And if you go into the Google, let's take a look. Uh, you find a, a picture of it. Let's find something that looks like it was done by humans. And a lot of it. Let's try this one right here. Let's click right there. It's like you look at it and say, well, nobody's working it. This is That does look like a farm. Okay, that does look like a farm. So maybe I'm wrong about that. What are they growing? I don't know. It's beautiful. Some beautiful land. I guess it maybe they're terracing. That one actually looks like a like a modern day man did it. So I'm not w unwilling to say I was wrong. Well, okay, moving on. Uh, this ancient irrigation of South Africa is something that I've also seen. And uh, let me get out of here and I'll zoom into it. So we're in Lesotho right now, and I just want to click it north. There it is. You can see it very clearly, Lesotho. And once we get that straight, we can back out a little more and we can go over here and you can see a major, major, like a delta. I don't know if you can call that a delta because it's not going into an ocean, but it is a, kind of like a alluvial fan of water. So I call that a delta. Alluvial fans are deltas of rock. So let's call it a giant inland river delta. Now, I just want to show you, you can easily see above it here and here and below it a little bit around here and over here all over these ancient lines. These and I uh, New Earth, like I said, there was a psychic connection because New Earth was just talking about these in this in the new video and, and calling them ancient irrigation canals. Actually, I think it's a different video. And they were going over these so-called canals. And when you think about these canals and you zoom in on one, you realize that you, you may be looking at the canals that Plato was writing about when he said the level plain of Atlantis was gridded with canals. I'm trying to measure, and I want to grab this to this. I mean, it's a thousand meters. That's exactly a kilometer, right? Well, one point one right there. But uh, if we go and do another one, let's start new. I don't like this measuring system. Let's try this one in the middle here, going across to the middle there, almost another kilometer. Another thing you can do instead of looking at kilometers, look at yards. Look at that. Look at that. Am I not done? Am I not done? I got exactly 1,000 yards across. Now, remember, if you talk about ancient units of measurement, more older than 
kilometers and meters is going to be uh, the meter was based on th the North Pole to the equator. The distance between the North Pole to the equator is, uh, I think, 10 million. It could be 1 million. I think it's uh, that's kilometers, so 10 million. Or maybe I'm wrong. I got double check it. It's a, it's a very even number. It's very evident that that's what it was based on. Now, the foot and the yard is more ancient because builders used their cubits that's part of the elbow to the middle fingertip and the foot so a yard is three feet and now we have a thousand yards across a thousand exact yards and you think that's nature making those what is this this is a whole country this is the whole country i think that this is some part of it is south africa but not all of it I can go and get the country border lines here. Let's do that. That'll help, won't it? So that's not even South Africa at all. It's Botswana. So we're in Botswana. That river is so visible. And when you zoom in, the work that was done is so visible. And it goes on for miles and miles and miles. Now, I have a feeling maybe they moved that dirt on top of Lesotho because... It seems like this, this, the dirt on top of Lesotho is drifting off and creating a change in the coloration of the land going down to this river. Everything on this side has a different color. Why is it a different color on this other side of the river? Because whatever was going down the mountain didn't make it across the river. Or you could also blame it on the country itself. Here you see a lot different but you do still see these ancient lines going over. Those are not new. Those are not new at all. Now I'm going to take a look and see what else we can see before we leave it. If you zoom in in Lesotho, you can see... Oh, there's a nice long ancient line, right? Look at that. So long. But when you get down there, it looks just like normal things. Look at that. That's a good, nice view. It's pretty good, right? You could probably even see an ancient line from there. So here we have this long thing. And then we can see down this cliff. Oh, oh, look at that ancient line right there. That looks just like the big ones. Is that? Okay, so actually that line right there and this line over here, those are way down the cliff. So he's looking down a cliff at that. Well, we're looking, what are we doing? Are we on an airplane? We're in an airplane. So this is an aerial photograph. Amazing. Nice shot, right? Nice shot. That's amazing. I feel like we're not even... Yeah, this is photosphere, but they're in an airplane. So when we leave the airplane, are we going to be able to find this? Is the question. There's a notch. This is a triangle. And over here is a notch. Let's get out of here and take a look. Um, notch, triangle, notch, triangle. It's kind of hard to see. I see that notch. We see those cliffs, and down at the bottom of the cliffs, we can see those lines. I mean, it's true that things can be ancient, but not super ancient. Maybe some of these lines were more modern day. Look at that one. I mean, it's going through the stone. It's not like people are walking across it. It's going through the dirt. So Lesotho remains an interest to me. I want to keep looking at it. Um, but Botswana over here, you can see, wow, look at how straight that is. It's like a tree, right? If we turn it around, it looks like a tree. Let me, let me show you. It kind of looks like a tree, but that's upside down. That's south is at the top. But what I more intrigues me is these ancient lines, these lines that go across mountains. Look at that line went right through the mountain. That's a mountain right there. Why do these lines, uh, how, how wide, if that's a thousand yards, that means that one of these inner lines is like a hundred yards across for miles and miles and miles and miles. Let's see how far this is right here, from here to there. That's 22,000 yards. Let's uh, change it to kilometers. That's, that is 20 kilometers. I'm not making statements here. I'm asking questions. Were there 
ancient terraforming fleets that could do what Plato wrote about and create a level plane at least 2,000 kilometers around, 400 kilometers north-south maybe. And he said 400 north-south and 600 east-west. And that's uh, that, that added up to, those were st stadia. He was measuring that in stadia. And uh, that's the thing. I forgot to mention about the units of measurement. These large things were stadia. Stadia was about 200 meters. They used meters in all the science measurements, but I don't believe in ancient times they were using meters. So it's not really a good idea. The Temple of Saïs told Plato's ancestors about Atlantis. But did that mean that Atlantis didn't pop the part where the where uh, the god Poseidon was the father of Atlas. Perhaps that came from was that in the Temple of Saïs? We'll never know because that's been submerged. Two thousand years ago, it was not submerged. So these lines here are one of the biggest interests to me because they're very very parallel. You can see that it's got intelligence. Let's take a look at this one real quick. This one, you go from here to here is one point, look at that, 1.5 kilometers. So that's 3.36. That's almost, that's about five, another 1.5. These are about 1.5 kilometers across. Let's get a little more precise. I'll zoom in. We'll go from this edge to this edge and see what we got here. This edge to this edge. That's one point, that's exactly one and a half kilometers. Which is quite interesting. We can change it to yards. I, I, I like to look at yards more. It's 1.65. If we pull that out to here, let's go to the middle, right in the middle of that. And let's go right in the middle of this. Now we've got 1,800. 1,800 yards. Now if I take this and I go over here and put it in the middle, it's also 2,000 yards. It's a little wider. It's getting, it's not exactly perfectly parallel. But it certainly does have a consistent, intelligent nature about it, in my opinion. Let me just check the live stream. Oh, finally have some chats. Hello. Let's see best 11. Nice to see you. Thank you for joining. Hello, let's see best. Nice to see you. Um, I've already been talking for 40 minutes and I don't have a lot of... Oh, I spelled it wrong. Sorry. Let's see best. Is that Les? Oh, I'm sorry. Now I get it. Les is best. Okay. Are you Les? Um, if you just popped in, I can show you these old channels. Uh, Earth, New Earth. You better uh, try to screen grab stuff. Who could have made that many ancient earthworks? When I saw this, she talked about her other video called Colossal Ancient Earthworks in America, Part 8, slash When the Survivors Wake Up. I think I almost watched all of them. The few of them I didn't get to finish or something happened. And then later she took them down from her channel and then she re-uploaded this March 23rd, 2020. Because I watched it for sure in 2018 or 2019, January. If you notice, it only has 9,000 views. So um, the idea that she... Uh, made money off this is uh, false unless the previous one went viral but this one didn't go so viral and I think that she lost monetization so she took them all down but then later reloaded them and of course uh, in addition to New Earth we have uh, um, what I also have seen but uh, she uh, this is her again talking about the ancient irrigation system and I, I want to watch this uh, by the way this is not her this is um, Gary Shonung, and there's four videos of his. This is number, see, it doesn't have a number. That's a problem, right? Uh, introduction, did it say? No? So this might be the first one. Let's put it over here. Let's put it over here at the back. And then the next one is here, not that. This one, this is part three of four. This was my thumbnail tonight. It's got, um, yeah, this is three of four. And there's no sound. So you just got to let them roll and you got to try to keep watching and discover these ancient foundations that 
exist. Now, some of them do look like they could have been modern day to me. And that means it could have been done in the last 5,000, 6,000 years, modern day, pre-reset. I don't even know what they're trying to showcase here, but uh, when you, you get to a point where you realize, no, there's clearly an ancient civilization that, and he, he's got them right here, these squares. Who did these squares? And you, if you look at it, you can see all sorts of uh, sacred geometry or other... Um, stuff i mean i think personally people think oh that's those are plots people are just subdividing the land but when you get into it and you can see this ancient shapes and ancient i call them now natska lines reshaping the earth then you get to a point where you realize no there were ancient civilizations that were able to do this i don't know if there were houses here I don't know why it's so perfect, those squares. Sometimes the clouds distort it. I don't know if there were trees. Maybe there were a bunch of trees that are gone. So this is another thing that you can find on her channel. There's like four videos by this guy who... I guess did his fair share of homework on Google Earth and uh, I'd like to follow up and go to his channel. Let me just zoom in and see if I can find this because he's using Google Earth. Look at that ancient square of trees. Imagine these trees have been there how long? More than a couple hundred, probably more than a thousand years. Looks like these roads tore through the trees also. Very interesting. But I don't know where this is exactly, and that's important. That's one problem with his so-called documentary, that you've got a lot of people who are um, able to add on to this existing so-called megaliths. Let's try this and see if we can get his channel. Pinterest. There's the Vimeo. Vimeo, sorry. And then we have... Uh, the Facebook post, which I think I'm her member, so. The Brink of Extinction. Let's try this one. See, we'll find it. Nazca Ruins by Gary Schoenberg. So it seems like he doesn't do YouTube, is what I'm seeing here. Very interesting stuff, right? Very interesting stuff. Indeed. Indeed. What is exact? What is Atlantis exactly? Um, no, it's not the underwater part is after the disaster happened. But I'm actually taking it in a, a sense that it was a location on Earth. I mean, I discovered it myself about ten years ago. I said to myself one day, "It's time to use Google Earth to discover the world." And I have to be honest, I'm quite busy. I didn't have time to get very far, but I was in Google Earth or maybe Google Maps, and I said, I, I need to start looking at the Sahara Desert. And this was, again, 10 years ago. I was not in the same mind state. I came in here, and I found this circle, and I thought, wow, that looks like an eye. Ha, ha, ha. Wow, that looks like an eye. I thought, I can't believe I never knew about this before. Why didn't I know about this eye? And so... I said, I'm going to look it up as Eye of Africa. I think that some people must know there's an eye in Africa. And, of course, there it is. So the Eye of Africa was intriguing, but I quickly forgot all about it until the Jimmy from Bright Insight video came out. And that video kind of opened my eyes to the theory that this, which is almost perfect, matched the concentric circles of Plato's Critias, Critias, I know that it's about four times larger, especially if you use the 210-meter Egyptian stadium. But the Greek stadium is about 150, so that makes it a little closer. And even though this was carved on the Temple of Sais, Plato didn't get it from there. When he wrote about it, he got it from stories his family had, sent, had handed down in generations. 
And Solon was in Saïs, but after that, Grandfather Cratius got the story from Solon and wrote about it, and then Grandson Critias took that story and passed it down to Plato. And in the dialogue that Plato wrote about Critias was in the room, and that's Grandson Critias, not Grandfather Critias, because it was actually more great-great-grandfather. I'm not really sure about that. So we'll, we'll see um, if you say, wow, that's too far inland. How can that be? No, the ancient river that's called the Taman Reset came right through here. It went over this and then came down again. It was easily connected to the river system. And that is an ancient shoreline here that could have been the lake that was on the north side. That's a lake bed. That's a dry lake bed. It's got the alkaloids. Now, I also think that this was a crater, and I think that it's the crater that took out Atlantis because the mountains are gone. I don't know enough about craters, so I need to learn myself. This video today was going to focus on these this New Earth video, and I mean, you can let it run and see for yourself all the different things that exist in the North America now this is this is a, like a, the protected coastline, like the original coastline and an added coastline to protect it from rough waters and rough seas and tidal waves, and boats won't have to risk so much. Now I think that these ellipses are from the Younger Dryas catastrophe event, but who's to say? Who's to say? I'm not about to bet my life on anything, but I do ask questions. Yeah, she does a good job. Uh, any more questions before I end the stream? Yeah, where are you located, Les is best, 11? Where are you located? I've got four viewers. It's time to start chatting and asking questions now. Otherwise, I'm out of here in 10 minutes for sure. This one here, this video is good. It shows her in uh, Italy. I don't want to play too much. Let's listen to her voice. The wandering. Hey, hey, this is a little bit too much. The labor invested in uh, making this entire network is unreasonable in relation to what we imagine the ancient men to have been. Although certain more remarkable spots of this network could they even preserve us historic sites and mark? She says here, Facebook messages are not monitored and comments are turned off. She has no interest in your comments. Now, I guess you can go to Twitter and I guess you can go to Instagram. Maybe you can get a comment there, but I didn't have much luck when I tried uh, communicating with one of the guys. Oh, here's a new video. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I can't help but look at my feed. So, thank you so much. Kansas, okay. Nice name. Are you male or female? Um, let's see here. Um, this was the Italy. I'm going to start closing stuff down. I think you can check it by yourself. Uh, let's, go to <clears throat> let's go to her channel and look at her videos real quick. I, don't, I think I did that already, but um, let's go to this one, videos and... Uh, see, again, I did mention that I didn't really like uh, their, she did for the last few months, like the Days of Darkness and End of Times, Part 3, End of Times. <clears throat> and this one down here, Asgard and the Slavic Prophecies. And I, I can't get too deep into these. I, I tried them. I, I checked them out. She's got quite a few. And then back uh, 2019, she re-uploaded ancient vehicle tracks. Very interesting. Here's the one I just showed you. When the Survivors Wake Up series is here. She did a good job. And look at the invisible layers of history with more footage. And look at these thumbnails. Some of them are just, if you hover over them, you get quite. Here's the one that we were just watching about Italy. I thought that that was... 
I don't understand why I thought that that was just recent. I guess maybe I was scrolling down and I saw it and I clicked on it. But I still think there was a psychic connection there causing me to choose that. Because she really uh, got the video I was looking for right there in the beginning of it. She, she, she showcased it. Okay, nice to meet you. Oh, Leslie. Okay, well, Leslie, I'm sorry, because when you say Les is best, I think lesbian. I'm sorry about that. Um, I just should let you know, because maybe somebody else would think that. And that's good, because I'm glad that means you're not really a troll or somebody bad or a lurker or somebody. Um, oh, an odd video from which channel? Which channel is your odd video from? <clears throat> Oh, the house is actually irrelevant towards the whole story. Um, I do have some information on Atlantis. We we are in the dawning of Atlantis, but we're not going to see it in our lifetimes if we only live to be 100. Uh, according to my calculations, we're not going to be in Atlant. I'm sorry, I, I said the wrong thing. Aquarius. Um, Aqu yeah, the seventh house. I mean, you can do a quick search on that because I don't remember... What is the how, moon in the seventh house mean in the song? Okay, whatever. The moon in the seventh house is a placement that manifests an emotional emphasis on building and maintaining relationships. Uh, the lunar position. Okay, that one doesn't really say it. Moon in the seventh house. Let's get an let's get an image, and see if we can find any images. The moon in the seventh house, and what they're talking about is a. Uh, okay, so there it is there. Um, a horizon plane, seventh house. I really don't know. It's the house of partnership. See, there are how many houses? There's 12. So each house is a constellation. So basically, I think what they're saying there is that the seventh house was, uh, is that Aries? I can't see. And maybe there's no relationship between the actual constellation. It's right there. What is that? I can't see try to read it it doesn't mention it but if we look at this chart we can find it again what it's trying to say is that um there's these segments of a year i guess and maybe they're not aligned with the beginning and the end of our typical 375 day year so um it's really irrelevant to uh the whole age of aquarius this is a yearly thing it happens every year the age of Aquarius happens every 26,000 years. 25,920. Every 72 years, we go one degree. So the age of Aquarius is where we have our equinox and where the sun rises in the morning on that equinox, where the sun is in the middle, not north, not south, but perfect east. see here well 12 12 12 12 12 right uh, when we we have this 12 number it pops up we're probably talking about the 12 constellations of the great year or the 12 months of a year the great year is again the procession those 12 tribes uh, could relate to uh, basically 1,000 or 2,150 years each if you divide 25,920 by 12, you'll get approximately 100, one, I think it's 2,150. I, I can't remember. Well, I do uh, question how the Bible was created and uh, the Old Testament was used by the Jews, but the New Testament seemed like it was used by the Romans to control populations and somehow or another it stuck. And that's a shame, but that's the truth, right? I'm not a big believer in the Bible, but I have learned a lot about ancient history from the Bible. And I do believe in the Noah myth, and I believe in other myths as well. But um, I do think that there are older sources of history out there than the Bible itself. Like what the Sumerians wrote, and the question about the missing link. Hi there, Willie. Interesting. 
about the trumpets. Willie, you caught me at the tail end of this. I'm already tired. It's Saturday night, 8.53 p.m. I didn't take my nap today. It's February 6th, Saturday at 9 p.m. I create videos like this because I'd like to um, catch live streams, but I am trying to earn money. If you are willing, please go on to Amazon.com and buy my book. I've got two right now, but a third one's coming out. The first book was written 17 years ago. I actually published it in 2007, but I, read, I wrote it right after SARS in 2003. And uh, I did, yeah, maybe I should say it was published uh, 14 years ago. And then the second one was published a couple years later. It was about another thing that happened to me. It's penned Gitz Ferrari. It's not under my real name. And you can check it out by yourself. This is my company. It says sold by Amazon.com Amazon Services LLC. That, that's, I should cancel this ad and start my own because this isn't right. They're, they're selling my product without letting me control it. Uh, anyways, I can sell you a copy of the book uh, directly to you, a hardback. Uh, just contact me for now. It's a few people who have won free books, but they never gave me their addresses or contacted me. Otherwise, I would have sent it to them. So basically, I'll send you a hardback for, I, I shouldn't say the old price because I think it's a little too cheap, but about 25 bucks. I could send you both books for 30 and one book for 20 probably. But it depends on how you pay me, really. If you give me Bitcoin, I'll definitely reward you. But I hope you give me a little more than 25 bucks. And uh, I can make a deal with you. I can even give you some cash. I'm trying to buy Bitcoin and put it in my computer wallet. I do have my Bitcoin wallet at the bottom of the uh, description. Yeah, I know, but I need to get paid for these books. And furthermore, I do have other channels as well. If you go in here and you go to switch account, you can see I've got several channels. One is called Marketing International. One is called The Secrets of Spoken English. Ooh, I got two new subscribers, I can tell. Uh, one is uh, Ancient Insights. I got one new subscriber, according to this. But I'm far from the subscriptions that I'll need to monetize. So that's why I do these videos here. And I always lead people back to this personals channel. I've got some other channels in here that are no good or they're empty. I created them in the middle of the night. I had a great idea. And then by the time morning came, I forgot about the whole idea. But I do have the channels created. Some of them can live stream, some of them cannot. You need phone numbers if you want to live stream. You need to register your channel with a phone number. Okay, check out Sylvia Ivanova on Facebook, but also her videos. She definitely has... Uh, look at that. Who could have made that many ancient earthworks? Is that the Italy? See, I think this is how I must have found the it. The labor invested. February 13th? When was this? Oh, that was a year ago. Okay, so maybe what happened was is I came here looking for new stuff and I found this old, old post. Let's see. Oh, this is Twitter. Okay, so that also is possible, but I don't know. That's a year ago. She doesn't Twitter, does she? I should say she doesn't tweet much. But she did have some stuff from the before. Very interesting stuff. Definitely, and she likes to paint as well. I'm not a big fan of her painting. But she seems to love it, so I'm not going to get down on some of her techniques. Myanmar is trending. But I think I've done everything I can. We've just got some ancient megaliths on this uh, earth that we really need to... Oh, hi there, Norway. Hi there, Willy Topaz. Was, do you know of any ancient megalithic things going up in, in Norway? Seems like there might be... Since I just showed some stuff from Alaska, especially up at the top, this is where we really should look for those ancient megalithic lines, right? See if you can find anything. You can definitely see the same effect, these so-called ejecta lakes. Look at that. Look at that. What's that? That looks like a rectangle in Norway. I'm trying to look at different countries more. 
I'm trying to look at that. There's an ancient line if I ever saw one. Look at that. There's a nice ancient line. How it cuts through the mountain, goes across the river, and then you can see a lineup. I think that we have these type of things going everywhere. Now this this ejecta uh, field where you have a lot of lakes, a lot of obvious cataclysmic movement there. I mean, that must have come from, let's say it came from right there. That just came right there. So this was a big old splash. This is the, right here is the one crater they found, but if you pinpoint it to the the area to here, that actually lines up. Does that line up? Let me double check. It lines up. That lines up. And you know what I see here from what I saw? It's not really lining up exactly. It's lining up from out here. Maybe that's a crater. Is that a crater right there? Why did it move? It seemed to move just now. That looks like it's, that could be the crater right there. Look at that circle. And what's this? What's that? What was it when it was uh, 200 feet higher? Is that the North Pole? Is that why? Oh, that's the North Pole. Okay, I'm sorry. So, um, I guess, I'm sorry. Can I turn it? Yeah, that's the North Pole. No wonder it's got a circle. Never mind. I'm sorry. I uh, just feel like uh, this, this, the Norway, we were here in Norway. We were looking at the pattern. It's not coming from down here. It's coming from up here somewhere. Maybe it went over the earth. And it, that just looks intelligent too, right? That looks like an intelligent curve right there. It's almost a perfect circle. Maybe there's a crater there. Well, guys, I've already talked long enough. I think it's time that I take a break. Thank you for your comments. The trail that ends in a hole by the North Pole. I'm trying to read this uh, trail that ends, the trail that ends up by the North Pole. Oh, it, go, it must be you're talking about under the ocean. You must be talking about under the ocean, right? Underwater trail, maybe an underwater canal. Oh, I did mean that, didn't I? You must have used voice recognition. Okay, here we go. Giant hole at North Pole. Yeah, I heard something about the hole. I have to, I have to be honest. I heard something about the hole, but um, I'm not much of a believer. It's a little bit far-fetched for me. I'd like to see more info. Didn't see any good, but I did see a link that talked about it. Right here. There's the hole, right? It's not a very good photo. Come on. North Pole. So I'm not sure what to think about that. I'm not really into alien stuff, although I do think that there might have been some type of an alien visitation from Nibiru at this point, but we'll see. I'll check these comments one last time, and then I'm out of here. It's been an hour, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Again, check out the New Earth channel. These are her videos. Sylvie Ivan Inova. Sorry. I don't know the name well. And this is one of the videos she showcased by Gary Shonen. Good stuff. Look at that thing. Let's watch that and then close it down. Have a good day. Wherever you Oh, look at that. You know what I see here? Let's go back on this one. Let's go back. Look at that. Are we seeing in the eye of Africa right there? Looks like it when it's moving away, an eye. Right there, it looks like an eye. Could the eye of Africa be have been man-made? Look at these this this uh, grid that is ancient and has sacred geometry. How many? Each one, one, two, three. So there's twelve. There's twelve. Every one has twelve. 
representing 12 constellations and 12 parts of the great year. Great stuff, but it gets a little monotonous. If you don't have any sound, there needs to be some music here. And there's no sound, no music. I want to try to find the original and see if he spoke and she removed it or what. That's big. Look at that circle. See, now this, I think, could be modern day, even though I used it in my thumbnail. But they sure do find a lot of them all over the place. And it's so big. I mean, what was it used for? Why would somebody create that in modern day times? Mining? It seems a little bit too much to be man-made. It's just so big. And it's a mound is what it is. It's built, built up. That's 3D. I'm sorry, if you check that under the 3D map, you can see that's a mound. I mean, who would build a mountain that tall and that... Look at that. It's like a pyramid foundation. Look at that. Beautiful. So there you go, folks. There are definitely ancient, uh, as you can say, colossal megaliths around the world and they have to be older than Atlantis they're, they're pre-Atlantis and depending on what you want to call it we have so little history that it's really hard to say what it really was and it may not matter at this point but we definitely do need to start using a better version of our history and when we come to teaching history to the students I have to be honest I never had any good history in my uh, studies in high school I never got history from ancient history never existed for me. We learned about the Greeks. We learned about columns and then we went from there. Have a good day, guys. I'm out of here. Thank you for your comments, Leslie and Willie. And there was one more. I thought, no, I thought I saw one more. Thank you guys. Have a good one. Thanks for your comments and your banter. I see we have five viewers. Thanks so much. Please, please, please make sure you're subscribed and make sure you showcase this channel on your social media and try to share the information. I need subscribers. I need to make more money. I don't beg. I don't have advertisements, but I'm going to have to do something soon. So uh, let's try to make me some money. Thank you. Bye-bye.